Hello there. Welcome back to the booth here at Pro Tour Amonkhet. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Luis Scott Vargas. And oh boy, do we have a finals lined up for you at home. Two very well-known names in the Magic playing community. We've got Jerry Thompson playing zombies for Team Mutiny. His opponent, Yuya Watanabe from Team Musashi. He's on Team or Etherworks Marvel. The players are ready. It's time for the finals. Let's head down to the feature match area. Hello and welcome to coverage of Pro Tour Amonkhet. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with the Hall of Famer, Luis Scott Vargas, and we are ready for the finals. Boy, do we have a good finals lined up for you as well. Two great names in Magic, Yuya Watanabe from Japan. He plays for Team Musashi, and uh, he's playing Teamer Etherworks Marvel on the other side of the table. Jerry T, as he is known. Jerry oh, yeah. Thompson from the United States, plays for Team Mutiny. He's on Mono Black Zombies. These are the two decks that represented what we saw here at the Pro Tour, especially in the top eight. And uh, this is not a matchup. This is a matchup we've seen many times before, Luis. Uh, what are we looking at here, matchup-wise? Uh, Jerry, just trying to straight-up outrace Yuya. Uh, okay. This is a critical turn. Watch this. Oh, nothing from Yuya Watanabe. He kept a one land hand. No land. It has a tune with Ether, but no green source. Spiral Canal cannot cast a tune, it, but it has the best possible cards for the matchup. It has multiple Harness Lightnings and Kozilex Return. So if Yuya draws a green source or any land, he can start casting Harness Lightnings, green source, cast a tune with Ether, but he does not have a whole lot of time to cast those cards. How quickly can Jerry get off to the lead here? Yuya has to draw land this turn. If he doesn't draw land this turn, it's going to be incredibly difficult for him to come back. He drew a Harness Lightning, Luis. He missed his land drop here, and all of a sudden, Jerry Thompson is firmly in the lead. He has declined to start attacking yet, preferring instead to draw a card. So I would expect wow. Jerry to draw a card this turn with Crypt Breaker. Clearly, he didn't attack, so that's what his plan is. Uh -huh. Next turn, I think it's way more likely he just turns everything sideways. You know, into attack. <laughs> yes. A little smirk there from Yuya Watanabe. This is not how he drew up game one of the finals for him. <laughs> it could be over in a heartbeat as he is now moving to his discard step. Oh, I, I, I know exactly that smirk that uh, Yuya has. I, I, I've, I've run this pl plan many, many times. The, the sheepish <laughs> discarding the hand size because you kept a, a one land hand is a, <laughs> it's a classic. It's, you don't really hope for it to happen in the finals of the Pro Tour, but... Of course not. But Yuya's hand was just Basically, perfect minus a green source, and he felt that that hand would, you know, gave him the best odds to win here. Okay, so Jerry draws a card on end step, and what does he have here? A Diagraph Colossus. But wait, there's more. A Dread Wanderer. And look at the board state that he's assembled here, and like you predicted, Luis, send in the clowns, as they say. A big attack, and next turn he could be threatening to end this game, and he does Yuya Watanabe down a game straight away to Jerry Thompson. The one lander just did not get there for him. No, I was trying to see if the advantage bar would go even further, but <laughs> it, it didn't get there. <laughs> Tried to push it to the limit, but uh, turns out Jerry Thompson win, wins game one so, so quickly. Taking a look at what the matchup looks like, because we didn't even have time to get into that before Jerry won that no. game. Uh, Jerry is a mono black beatdown deck with very few ways to interact against the Marvel deck, especially in game one. And his goal is to just reduce Yuya's life total before Yuya can use Etherworks Marble, mm -hmm. which uh, is, of course, what Yuya's deck is built around. Okay. Wow. All right. We're going to take a short break here. We'll let you catch your breath after that lightning fast game number one. We'll be back with more finals action here from Nashville after these messages. Rise among the worthy next weekend. Bring your best standard deck to become the Amonkhet Game Day champion of your local game store. Top finishers are awarded full art premium promo cards and an exclusive game day champion playmat for the winner. Find a game day near you at magic.wizards.com slash game day. Looking for a challenge? Magic Online offers monthly limited and constructed events which lead to the yearly Magic Online Championship. Download Magic Online at mtgo.com and start earning the points you need to enter.
Welcome back to the feature match area here in Nashville, Tennessee for Pro Tour Amonkhet. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Luis Scott Vargas. And uh, if you blinked, you may have missed game one. Jerry Thompson ran over Yuya Watanabe. Put himself up one game to zero. We are playing best three out of five here. So this game does not include sideboards. Yu is going to try a slightly different approach this game. Uh, you can see these access to two, two lands. lands. I see. <laughs> he will be much happier with the result one way or the other. Dread Wanderer is the turn one play for Thompson. So how this game is going to play out is actually very typical of this matchup. Jerry's going to play uh, Dread Wanderer, and then turn two, he's got Metallic Mimic with a potential of Relentless Dead instead and a Dark Salvation. So he's going to curve out, he's going to play some zombies, they're going to get plus plus one. Lord of the Accursed even adds to that. On the other hand, Yu is going to go Rogue Refiner, Rogue Refiner, Etherworks Marvel, and see what we hit off the Marvel. Okay. So zombies versus Eldrazi is, is really the, the feature of this match. They are both unleashed. Wow. Unfortunately for Yuya, he drew that Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot a turn too late. If he had drawn it on turn two, he could have turn two, Puzzle Knot, turn three, Rogue Refiner, turn four, Marvel, and activate it. He's going to have to settle for Marveling on turn five. Now, the good news is the Rogue Refiner helps potentially stem the bleeding a bit here for you, Watanabe, so perhaps he'll take a little less damage in the process. Jerry's surveying the scene. He's got Metallic Mimic. And Jerry could have a, a very uh, efficient turn here. He can play the Relentless Dead and cast Dark Salvation, killing the uh, Rogue Refiner, or he can just play another zombie. Go. 
Yeah, he just went for Dark Salvation for the for the full amount he could cast, which is one zombie, and killing the Rogue Refiner plus attacking. The zombie, of course, gets a plus one, plus one counter thanks to the Metallic Mimic as well. So a good turn, no matter what, there for Jerry. But we know the heavy hitters are going to start coming down for you, Watanabe, pretty soon, and it feels unlikely that Jerry's going to be able to kill Yuya before he gets to activate his Aetherworks Marvel, and you know how that can go. We do. We've seen uh, Aetherworks Marvel spun a few times in this tournament, and Yuya's first choice, of course, would be Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Though he does have plenty of other cards that help him get at least stable on board, but Jerry's draw is very good. At, at this rate, Yuya will need to hit Ulamog in order to have a sizable advantage after the Marvel. Hitting anything else is not quite going to get him there. Especially since he does not have access to Chandra Flamecaller, which some of the other versions did. And she is very key in this matchup. Whirler Virtuoso here for you, Watanabe. It puts him up above six, in fact, up to seven energy. So that Aetherworks Marvel next turn is still very much intact and ready to be activated. And if Yuya makes a Thopter, he's going to no, no longer be able to activate that Aetherworks Marvel. So mm. he's, he's not in a position where he can spend a bunch of energy if his plan is to still use the Marvel. Lord of the Accursed pre-combat there from Jerry Thompson to make sure that his team realizes the benefit. And that enables quite an attack here from Jerry. Yuya already down to 14. And Yuya has the option, his best trade, it would be World of Virtuoso for the Metallic Mimic, trading because Lord of the Accursed. Taking 7, falling to 7, and then being able to marvel where Anulamog would easily stabilize him. If he takes all the damage, he does keep World of Virtuoso in play, which lets him spend energy later to make Thopters, but... At that point, he, he pays a, a pretty hefty life total cost. And it is worth noting that uh, Lord of the Accursed granting the Menace ability next turn also makes it so you will have a harder time stabilizing if he doesn't isn't able to, to stem the bleeding a little bit. Yeah, it does feel like he uh, is incentivized to block here, especially given that <clears throat> if he does play the Aetherworks Marvel, he's unlikely to have enough energy left over to make a Thopter. Ah, he's going to make a Thopter before blocks. Oh, Looks like he's going to make two Thopters. Yeah, so he's actually on one energy. The die got bumped, but I should get that corrected just for correctness sake. Should be at one. There we go. Thank you, Jerry. And so that that's a much more conservative line of play. You is putting himself in a position where he doesn't need to hit off Marvel. In fact, he can't even play and use Marvel this turn. Mm -hmm. But in exchange, he takes uh, fewer damage and uh, is facing down a less imposing board. There's a Rogue Refiner for Yuya Watanabe. He's got a land. Ooh, and a Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot. Now he is back up to six, and you can see how his line of play worked out pretty well for him. Yes, he takes the turn off from activating the Marvel, but like you said, he preserves his life total pretty significantly here. He's still at 13. And Jerry has a good follow-up here. Uh, he's going to be able to attack with both of his creatures and then play uh, the Diagraph Colossus and Relentless Dead. So, again, flooding the board of zombies, as his deck is wont to do. Down to six, take seven. There's a Diagraph Colossus, and this is just kind of the signature play, is to play it plus a zombie in the same turn to just have that explosive turn. I mean, look at that. If Yuya doesn't hit <laughs> Ulamog here, Yuya is in quite a bit of trouble. He just added 10 power to his board. I mean... <sighs> All right, well, you know... This game could very well come down to one spin of Aetherworks Marvel. And that really is Jerry's job, right? I mean, there's not a lot he can do pre-board from stopping Yuya from doing it. He just needs to make sure that 
he punishes him as hard as he can and makes sure he can only spin at one time. Jerry has no way to stop or even delay Etherworks Marvel, like you said. So his his goal is to put you in a position where he has to hit Ulamog to survive. And we saw Jerry defeat an Ulamog uh, in his uh, earlier match. And yeah. it is possible that an Ulamog here, it would exile Lord of the Accursed and either Diagraph Colossus or Relentless Dead. That would put you in a position where he's not he's not be far behind, but Jerry still has outs there. He could still draw Liliana's Master or Dark Salvation and potentially win the game. So this is a big spin All for right. Yuya. Here we go. Let's see if Yuya can hit an Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, off of this spin from Etherworks Marvel. And he did not. He didn't. Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot, is that the best thing he can do here? He consults his hand again before making the decision. And that's always the best time is the uh, Marvel opponent when they like look at their Marvel cards and just go you know deep into the tank. They start thinking about, well, wow, exactly he what started just thinking about it. And the more he thought about it, the more dead he got. And Jerry Thompson wins another quick game. And boy, he is up two games to zero here in the finals. Next thing you know, we're going to sideboards. Jerry's one went away from being a Pro Tour champion. How do you like that? Crazy stuff. Man, these matches have gone by very quickly in the top eight today, Luis. Yeah, the, you, you've got uh, vast monocolored aggro decks, and you've got turn four combo decks, and yeah, that tends to make things uh, move right along. Let's take a look at the sideboards now, because we're heading into game three. We've got Yuya Watanabe's board here. Some shielded ether thieves, the tireless tracker times four. I see radiant flames. That one really stands out to me, Luis. What, what, how do you break this down? Shield Ether Thief is good in the early game. It can block uh, just about all of Jerry's attackers. Not as good at blocking Relentless Dead, thanks to Menace, but it blocks everything else. Later enough, Liliana's Masteries and Lords of the Accursed come out that it becomes less effective, but still, it, it is a, better than a removal spell early often because it, it essentially neutralizes a creature while generating a couple energy, and then you can draw a card. So that card looks good. And then here's the heavy hitter, Radiant Flames. Two copies of Radiant Flames mean that Yuya actually has outs against Jerry you know, curving out and getting five creatures into play. Radiant Flames can wipe all those zombies up, so Jerry is not going to often be able to play around Radiant Flames. Liliana's Mastery plus Lord of the Accursed does a pretty good job. You know, with a 3-4 Lord of the Accursed, all your other zombies are getting plus two, plus two. Right. And you can survive Radiant Flames, but it's hard to get to that position, and Radiant Flames does what you want, so... Yeah, and just Lord of the Accursed pl plus a bunch of zombies doesn't get the job done. Certainly not. Yeah. Uh, Yuya has some dissenters, deliverances, and negate in his main deck that I'm sure he's not super happy about. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at Jerry T's sideboard mono black zombies here. So, <laughs> a funny oh. note about Jerry's sideboard. Uh, Jerry tested uh, last night, and his team, Team Mutiny, along with uh, Team Channel Fireball Fire, all tested... And they came to the conclusion that Lost Legacy was not actually good. Oh, no. So Isn't it in there for this matchup? Nominally, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, Is he not going to bring it in? According to the information I got, they <laughs> found that it was better to not. And, in fact, we saw Christian Calcano in this matchup cast turn three Lost Legacy, turn four Lost Legacy, and lose to Martin Mueller. So the fact that they're not bringing Lost Legacy is a sign of kind of how how mid-range and grindy U.S. deck can be and kind of how ineffective it might be as a sideboard card. On the other hand, Transgress the Mind is quite effective and uh, okay. is the, the kind of card Jerry wants. <laughs> Scrap Heap Scrounger also offers a recursive threat, uh, especially since Jerry wants to trim some of his removal, most likely. He, does, he definitely wants some of it, but he, having the full suite of removal is not where you want to be against the combo deck. And the other cards, the, the Liliana's there, that's just too slow, right? Liliana is mostly to pick off one toughness creatures, yeah. and in attrition battles, what you use deck is not really an attrition deck. It, it can play like that sometimes, but Jerry just always has to respect Ulamog and yep. Liliana. Well, I guess she's—I I don't know if she is or is not good against Eldrazi in this story, but <laughs> in any case, Liliana, the last hope, not not the best Ulamog slayer. All right, well, players are consulting their boards and finishing that up here while they finish up. We can look forward to game three. Yuya Watanabe from Team Musashi. Now, we got a chance to look 
uh, over at the news desk at some of the, the team standings coming in. Now, those, of course, won't be finalized until this match ends and we get the final results from the Pro Tour. But I can tell you one thing. Team Musashi is smashing it right now. They had a great performance last Pro Tour and the best one here, too. Yeah, they're uh, number one by a mile. Uh, team Mutiny is staging a comeback uh, to the other team's displeasure. They're, they're turning the ship around, as it were. <laughs> and I, I Jerry is their lone holdout. Get, he, he could go up to 31 pro points, leaving them, you know, well into the top eight. Let's take a look at one of the most important cards of the entire tournament. That's right, Etherworks Marvel. This is a very tricky card, but, uh, you know, once you tell a professional Magic player this can allow you to cast Ulamog Ceaseless Hunger on turn four, they, they sign up for it. They'll make it work. It because Etherworks Marvel uh, casts the card, so in order for it to be able to cast instants and sorceries, when you cast the Eldrazi like Ulamog Thesis Hunger uh, or Emma Cruel, the Promised End in future iterations or past iterations of Standard, rather, you got you get the cast trigger, which is exiling two permanents for Ulamog. So Ulamog's the card you always want to hit off Marvel. There are very few opportunity or chances to hit anything else above Ulamog. Sometimes Chandra Flame Color yeah. steps in, in the in the way, but for the most part, and especially in this Pro Tour Finals, we're just going to see. When you activate Marvel, he's thinking Ulamog, Ulamog, Ulamog. Right. Yeah, he can steal games by just activating this thing on turn four and dominating his opponent with an Ulamog. But we have seen consistently that the Etherworks Marvel archetype has the ability to activate this card over and over and over over the course of a game until they either grind their opponent out or finally hit an Ulamog. Speaking of... Big Daddy's home. Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Gosh, this card's good. Yeah, and these uh, bullet points here are actually teaching me a lot I did not know about Ulamog, uh, such w as... Which one is teaching you a lot here, Louis? The Ulamog lineage focuses on consumption, whereas uh, Kozak focuses on distortion. Oh, I, I see. I, Ulamog does do some consumption. Uh, exiling two target permanents means that there are not that many boards that don't shift in your favor when you exile your opponent's two best permanents and get a 10-10 indestructible. Yeah, of course, the attack trigger also generally reduces the clock to two to three turns regardless of what the board state looks like. Yeah, usually it, in Constructed, it's most often two hits will we'll, we'll seal the deal. Uh, sometimes only one, uh, one is needed, but Ulamog uh, gets hungry but gets full fairly quickly once Ulamog starts attacking. All right, are the players ready? It looks like they are. Let's head down for game number three. If Jerry Thompson can close this game out in his second Pro Tour top eight, he will be a Pro Tour champion. Yuyu Watanabe on the other side of the table. Boy, he has a lot of work to do. He's already in the Hall of Fame, but getting that trophy, such a big difference for these players. This is why they come out. And Yuya is going to have to win three games in a row post-sideboard against a tough opponent in Jerry Thompson. And Jerry has a very good draw here. Uh, he does need to find a third land, but he's got the Dreadwander in to transgress the mind, so he's going to get to take a look at Yuya's hand and see how he can best stifle Yuya's game plan. Yeah, a third land will be pretty nice for Jerry. Look at that, three, three drops and then a nice... Mana Sync later for Dark Salvation, which he can just cast for three as well. So let's see the hand from Yuya Watanabe, a pair of Etherworks Marvel, and then there's also a Glimmer of Genius over there, and a uh, Rogue Refiner. So normally when you transgress, you're just looking for Etherworks Marvel, but because Yuya has two, Jerry's much more likely to take something like Rogue Refiner, which is Yuya's only three cost casting cost card. Uh, on the other hand, Jerry does have uh, Dark Salvation, so that may might give him pause, but it doesn't surprise me that he just goes after Yuya's curve here. Yeah, that reduces Yuya to not having much to play this turn, though. He did find a Harness Lightning off the top of his library there. No, well, Jerry did not find a third land. He found a Metallic Mimic instead, so it is still a castable spell for him. So not, not the worst-case scenario, but certainly he would trade that for a Swamp. Definitely. So that Metallic Mimic is light, light, likely... Likely to eat a Harness Lightning here. Harness and Lightning is going to kill Metallic Mimic. And it did not taste good. <laughs> <laughs> Crunchy. 
two extra energy in the bin as well for Yuya, who, well, he's just going to pass the turn, signaling he'd like to use a Glimmer of Genius rather than run out one of his marvels here. And Yuya also drew a sensor. So ah. he's he's got a good interactive <laughs> spell but Jerry drew in his hand. <laughs> That sensor will still will still get value later, and as long yeah. as you can find anything that creates energy or any removal spells, he's going to be in pretty good shape. Because those dread wanders are not coming back anytime soon. Despite no. having an ability to come back, Jerry has way too many cards in his hand. So you can use cards like Harness Lightning or Trade Rogue Refiner for Dread Wander and be pretty confident that they're staying put in the graveyard for at least five or six turns. So you resolves his Glimmer of Genius, and he's got an Attune with Ether here as well. And that'll get him up to the six energy he needs. So okay. we're, we're going to get to see a Marvel spin here. And this is not one of those Ulamog or Bust spins. This is the, yeah, if I hit Ulamog, I win the game on the spot. I'm going to exile Jerry's two swamps. Right. If I miss, I'm probably still fine. I'm going to hit Rogue Refiner, World of Virtuoso, Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot. Yu just passes the turn back to Jerry. He's going to activate it during combat. Things looking very good for Yuya in game three. The first two were lightning fast games in Jerry Thompson's favor, but this one might be just as quick, except for in this time for Yuya. Thompson, no choice. He's going to attack, and let's see what Yuya Watanabe hits with this Etherworks Marvel. <laughs> oh, he just throws the Ulamog on the table, and up go the permanence. Game three <laughs> is in the books. Yuya Watanabe with the big smile. Jerry Thompson with a little, little flair there. And game three goes to Yuya Watanabe. So he can breathe a sigh of relief there because he just hasn't really had a chance to get on the table. Jerry just running him over in the first two games. Now he kind of gets one back. And uh, we've got two more games to go. Jerry Thompson, one game away. Yuya Watanabe's got to win both if he's going to be our champion. As he calmly goes back to consult his sideboard. And Jerry also looking into sideboards. Let's take a look at a few more cards while we let our players finish up. Atunith Ether, a card that came out in Kaladesh and has seen extensive play in Standard, actually. It's a pretty key piece. It fuels various uh, energy decks. Etherworks Marvel being the most common one, it also allows uh, th those those decks to play three colors in a fairly you know, painless fashion because a tune is such a powerful card that you'd play it in a two-color deck, but so adding the third color is just not that huge of a cost. You even see it in aggressive decks. You saw uh, Ken Yukihiro make top eight here, top four even, with the tune with Ether in his green-black energy aggro deck. So turns out one mana to fix your mana, get another land of any kind, plus two energy is just, you know, that enough value that a lot of different decks are interested in it. Another uh, another comeback tale here in the zombies. We've seen quite a few of the cards that, you know, kind of caught people's eye initially but never really found a home. And another one is Diagraph Colossus. Yeah, you'd say, like, a lot of these cards are coming back from the dead. And Diagraph Colossus is one of them. I want to note that I did not say that, by the yeah, way. In your words, yeah. Uh, Diagraph Colossus <laughs> often comes in as a 5-5 five, five or greater. We, we saw that happen uh, when Jerry was playing against Ken Yukihiro. And it means that any cheap zombie you play afterwards just spawns multiple zombies because the the turn four play of Diagraph Colossus plus Dread Wanderer or Crypt Breaker is a really big swing. You know, I, I heard some of the players um, in one of the testing houses that I visited leading up to the Pro Tour talking about this and comparing it to Gideon in the sense that it can just make a huge creature and a 2-2 two -two in the same turn and then continue to make 2-2s two as you go forward, but only three mana. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Uh, the difference is that Dargraph Colossus requires you to play basically all zombies in your deck. These right. zombie decks thrive on hitting a critical mass of zombies. But once you do, yeah, Dargraph Colossus adds a, a, a really big element to the deck. I've been really impressed by this card. This is the, the premium. It, it is funny because sometimes they play it on turn three if they don't have anything else. But as we've seen from Jerry Thompson, they're also apt to play it on turn four and then follow it up with the one drop to create just a simply huge mass of zombies off of just a couple of cards. Been really impressed by this zombies deck. Yeah, it was looks good. It was not missing very much. You mm. know, it was close anyway. We, a lot of the cards we saw featured are were from the you know Shadows of Innistrad block, but 
you know, tried a zombie theme. That deck wasn't quite there, even though some players did choose to play it at pro, that Pro Tour. Uh, oh, yeah. Much to their chagrin. On the other hand, once we got Metallic Mimic, Dread Wander, and Liliana's Mastery, all of a sudden, Zombies is just a premier aggro deck in the format. All right. Play is underway here in game number four. Jerry Thompson, if he wins this game, will be your champion. Yuyu Watanabe fighting to force a game five and deciding game. Team Mutiny versus Team Musashi in the finals. Jerry Thompson has a nice little one drop with Dread Wanderer, which is going to get in for two damage here. Yuyu Watanabe with a lumbering falls on his turn, and Thompson with a nice curve. Metallic Mimic naming Zombie is his turn to play as he passes the turn back. Ooh, nice draw there from Yuya, though. He found himself a Harness Lightning. He picked up Harness Lightning and has Radiant Flames in his hand. So despite the board looking like it's in favor of Jerry, Yuya's hand is really good for this matchup. He even has Shielded Aether Thief, which can provoke Jerry into playing more zombies, setting up the uh, Radiant Flames perfectly. Jeez. What a great draw for Matanabe. What can Jerry do about it? Jerry does have an interesting bit of counterplay here. By playing Crypt Breaker before attacking, he can make it so if Yu wants to use a removal spell, he uses it right now. And now he, instead of attacking for four damage, it's just going to not attack. There's a pretty good chance he just draws a card. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see what, whether Jerry thinks he needs to be more aggressive here. He does have another Crypt Breaker in hand, which makes it a lot more interesting because he could play the second Crypt Breaker and that way he would get to attack with the Dread Wanderer. But he's aware of the Radiant Flames just as much as Yuya is, and he has incentive to not overextend into them. So he's going to draw a card using his Crypt Breaker. And he's passed the turn back. Jerry did not play the second copy of Crypt Breaker. He just said go. He does not want to walk into a devastating Radiant Flames. And the fact that Yuya thought for a second and then didn't play anything in a turn. I think both players know a lot of what's going on here. There's a lot Definitely. of subtext, and yeah. Jerry's going to be playing around Radiant Flames. He, he, he chose not to overextend into it. And Yuya is aware that Jerry's not adding more to that board. Exactly. That, that was the thing for Yuya. He, it, he had to do that anyway. I mean, if Jerry just keeps drawing cards, building out a little bit more, a little bit more, it's not getting any better for Yuya. So Yuya recognizes that. He's not going to get... Silly here. He's just going to wipe away three creatures with one card. He's got to be happy with that. But the rebuild is real for Jerry. He does not hit a land, but he has Crypt Breaker and a Wanderer there. Jerry is going to need to hit a third land. He's got three powerful three drops in hand. Though he does have a Scrap Heap Scrounger, so at worst he can play the Scrap Heap Scrounger uh, if he does not draw a land. But the disadvantage here, he's not really pressuring Yuya. He's not getting Yuya to the point where Yuya needs to take any action where it, and you is happy casting glimmer of genius and just drawing more cards instead of having to use his removal spells Jerry's going to attack with the dread wanderer that may provoke the shielded ether thief to come out you also may value just using up for sure, all of his mana with the Glimmer of Genius. Unless he decides he wants to use Harness Lightning in addition to Shielded Aether Thief, in which case he would also be able to use up all of his mana. Shielded Aether Thief hits the battlefield. Jerry does not have a way to interact at the moment, so he's going to allow that. A block's going to happen, generate an additional energy. If you use playing the Shielded Aether Thief, I I think there's a pretty good chance he follows up with Harness Lightning on the Crypt Breaker end of turn. Yeah, for sure. Just seems likely from a mana use perspective. And Crypt Breaker is a problem. Jerry, another sick combo here. Discarding Ooh. Scrap Heap Scrounger to Crypt Breaker, potentially. Yuya declines to kill the Crypt Breaker. Interesting. So he doesn't have access to another Sweeper, but suppose he is not feeling threatened enough by Crypt Breaker to, to want to use Harness Lightning on it. Yeah, I mean, he certainly can just react, and, you know, if Jerry decides to put another zombie on the stack, he can just kill the Crypt Breaker then. But, of course, that does strand some of his mana, as he could have used it last turn, and he still has a Glimmer of Genius that he'd like to get out of his hand at some point as well. 
In the meantime, he just passes. Crypt Breacher is going to get activated by Jerry Thompson. He's going to put a Scrap Heap Scrounger in the graveyard and make a 2-2 zombie. And now Jerry is getting to draw extra cards with his Crypt Breaker. So even though Yuya has a Glimmer of Genius, Jerry has an extra card off of Crypt Breaker. I'm, I'm surprised that the Harness Lightning did not take that out. So since Jerry drawing extra cards is one of the ways he gets back into this game. I'm surprised too. It did feel like the decision was, do I want to play Shielded Ether Thief plus kill your Crypt Breaker with my Harness Lightning, or do I want to resolve a Glimmer of Genius? And he decided kind of in the middle, which he did not expect. Wow, he just let him resolve the uh, Lord of the Accursed now as well. Yeah, I, I believe he has plans to cast Glimmer of Genius here. Yeah, for sure. Which he does. Looking for Etherworks Marvel here. He's already gotten up to six energy. Bottom, bottom. And use running up against a game state where he's going to need another sweeper or a high impact card like Ulamog. He, he he's getting further and further behind each turn that Jerry activates Crypt Breaker. Yeah, he still has that Harness Lightning in his hand to take out one threat, but like you said, he's falling and falling and falling as a Crypt Breaker generates advantage for Jerry. Yuya is going to play a Rogue Refiner this turn. Is it eight energy? Still can't find himself in Etherworks Marvel, though. Go. Cool. Going down to 18, draw a card, says Thompson. All right. All this extra card draw is paying off for Thompson. He's now hitting his land drops. Yeah, he's not going to miss another relevant land drop here. He's still behind from missing earlier ones because now at some point he's going to want to cast this Transgress the Mind. Yeah, he really is probably starting to feel the pressure of that, isn't he? He As knows he doesn't have Etherworks Marvel in hand right. prior to the Rogue Refiner resolving. After right. the Rogue Refiner, Ether, you could have drawn a Marvel. So, But, you know, he does have a Torrential Gear Hulk here, Luis. And, uh, you know, Jerry's looking at, okay, next turn you get to untap with six lands for the first time this game. That's got to be consideration. And... You has shielded Ether Thief, so at some point he could be drawing, drawing into more cards. Sure. Okay, so Yuya pauses Jerry as Jerry puts Lord of the Accursed on the stack, and Yuya's going to use Harness Lightning to kill the Lord of the Curse of the Accursed that was already there. And Jerry, remaining efficient as possible, is going to use the Crypt Breaker. Put that on the stack. Hoping to draw another Crypt Breaker in order to get a second Crypt Breaker activation this turn. But fortunate for Jerry hitting another land. So Jerry actually is, has, is actually kind of flooded. <laughs> he misses land drop for a turn or two and now has too many. They're shielded Ether Thief drawing a card for Yui Watanabe. Was a land. And he has Torrential Gear Hulk, which will play as a Harness Lightning right now. And you actually is well on his way to hard casting Ulamog. He's on seven lands, three more turns, but he's got more lands in hand. In fact, he's got three more lands in hand. So he is going to be able to cast Ulamog. And at some point, Jerry has to play around that. Though Transgress the Mind can fairly effectively d deal with a, a Ulamog in hand. Yeah, well-timed Transgress can take care of that little problem. Jerry's going to make the Dreadwanderer block there. Grasp of Darkness for Thompson. All right, here's Transgress the Mind. So first things first, he says, let's see what you got. This could prompt Yuya to just cast his uh, Torrential Gear Hulk. And it almost assuredly will because whether or not he wants to cast Harness Lightning or Glimmer of Genius, Gear Hulk is his best card in hand, and it's the way he uses all his mana this turn. So Yuya is going to make it rain here.
16. Harness Lightning coming out from the graveyard and killing the other Lord of the Accursed. But Jerry activates to draw a card first. There's Ulamog being taken away. It's the only target. And, uh, you know, you use hand doesn't look so great. He's got another copy of Shielded Ether Thief and three lands. Not spectacular, but those, that Shield Ether, Ether Thief already in play is going to do a lot of good work. Yuya doesn't really need to conserve his energy at this point. He's going to just be able to start drawing cards. It's going to be a pretty massive Diagraph Colossus. Wow. 7-7? Seven, seven? Really is a Gideon, isn't it? Okay, well, the Shielded Ether Thief is going to draw another card from Yuya. We see Jerry Thompson pulling slightly ahead here. He just needs to win this game. Yuya's going to have to lean pretty hard on these Shielded Ether Thieves because... He currently is down to one spell in hand, a Shielded Ether Thief. The rest are lands, and drawing a two new land for his draw step did not help that. Man, I keep going back to that turn when Yuya did not use his Harness Lightning to kill that uh, Crypt Breaker. Breaker that yeah, it is. Re I mean, it has drawn Jerry three or four cards since then. If there was a turning point in that game, that was it. And we're, we're going to see how it plays out from here, but it it does mean that Jerry has access to a lot more cards than he would have otherwise, and he it continues to to grow. Yeah, sitting there. Not now, not an insignificant chance we see Ormondal Profane Prince. By the way, that Westville Abbey at some point could threaten, because even though Jerry's drawing lands as well, his Crypt Breaker can turn those lands into zombies, and he gets enough of those, and the Westville Abbey could awaken. So besides Ulamog, does Yuya have any way to interact with, with uh, Ormondal? I mean, he can make Thopters, I guess? Making Thopters is a fairly effective way to, uh -huh. to, to keep Ormondal off your back, but Yuya's a, a ways away from that right now. Yuya looks like he's going to pass the turn back, and he does. He's going to sit behind his Torrential Gear Hulk. Another Diagraph Colossus. Goodness. Very big draw for Jerry. Like, literally, it's, it's gigantic. To <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that really is important here because oftentimes you'll see the Torrential Gear Hulk be able to hold off basically any one creature from the zombie deck. But uh, the Diagraph Colossus are actually big enough to just rumble. There it is. Diagraph, Diagraph Colossus number two. Trigger. Enters the battlefield, so he's going to get a bunch of plus one, plus one counters on that as well. Wow. Three mana for nine power and nine toughness. Well, we're getting to the point where if Jerry uses Crypt Breaker here and draws a cheap zombie, then Yuya is going to be very, very quickly become Ulamog or Bust. Because once you have two Diagraph Colossi going to work, then y y your board just becomes flooded with zombies. One advantage over Gideon, you can have multiple copies of Diagraph Colossus and play at once. You know, I know that Jerry Thompson, <coughs> he was on that list of greatest players to not have a Pro Tour Top 8 for quite a while. He finally picked up his in 2013. He's back with a vengeance, and Jerry is looking to take home the trophy in his second eff effort here on the Top 8. Look at this block. It's an interesting block. Yuya throws in two Ether Thieves to get two energy, and then the Gear Hulk plus the Lumbering Falls would take out the Diagraph Colossus. Uh, Jerry can use Grasp of Darkness to shrink the Torrential Gear Hulk. Then he can take out the Lumbering Falls and the Gear Hulk, or take out uh, Gear Hulk plus one of the copies of Shielded Ether Thief. Either way, he gets to keep his Diagraph Colossus on the battlefield as well, right? If he uses Grasp, he does. Right. Seems like there's a pretty good chance that uh, Jerry will end up wanting to do that because, yeah, it, it's he gets to keep a seven seven and gets to kill an additional creature. In this case, uh, looks like lumbering falls. There's grasp on the torrential gear hook. Jerry Thompson is moving closer and closer to victory. You're just going to use the Shielded Ether Thief to draw a card. And he says, okay, this all happens. So those two die. 
He gets to keep both of the shielded ether thieves, but look at that board from Thompson. Jerry's been un unable to bring Dread Wanderer back because he's drawing so many sweet cards off of uh, Crit Breaker here. That's right. He's going to draw another one. He's trying to hit a one-drop zombie. One-drop would be absurd here. Did not. He hit a re Relentless Dead instead. Passes the turn back to Watanabe, who needs something, and he needs it soon. The problem for Watanabe, though, is drawing Aetherworks Marvel doesn't necessarily give him a spin right now. He has a Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot, but that was his draw step. That means he doesn't actually have the Marvel. That's right. His hand is a whole bunch of lands. We may be close to crowning a Pro Tour champion here. Hey, this one is getting really down to the wire here. In Jerry Thompson's favor, he had to face down Yuya Watanabe, and he is on the verge of dispatching him in game four. He's so close. Watanabe down to 18 has not had a great draw this game. He has used his shielded Ether Thieves to protect his life total and draw him a bunch of extra cards, but he has not found what he needs. Look at that hand. So you had deciding whether to play an Enter the Battlefield tapped land or an untapped land because of what he's going to draw off the Ether Thieves and what instance he could have in his deck. So even even when he's quite far behind, Yuya does have to try to play as best he can and try to give himself the best chance to win this game. A land off the top for Thompson. Like I said at the beginning, both of these players, very well-known Magic players and very popular in the game. They are going to have a lot of fans rooting for them on both sides. Okay, here we go. This is just every play from Jerry that is a big play from this point on. Relentless Dead creating two 2-2 two, two zombies in addition to itself. They do enter the battlefield tapped. Yeah, no, no stick going off with Crypt Breaker here. Jerry carefully surveying the scene here. Combat. He's going to calmly move to combat. Remember, this is a game where Jerry got hit by Radiant Flames on turn three. Yeah, and it killed three creatures. He's just going to attack with his two seven sevens this time. I think we're very quickly entering uh, the realm of you needing an Ulamog and not being good enough. The point where Ulamog does not save you? You will need Ulamog plus something else, which is a bad place to be because he's very far away from even just having the Ulamog. Right. He does get some cards here, though. Here's another one. It was a rogue refiner for the first dress up. There is an Aetherworks Marvel for Yuya Watanabe. He is going to be able to spin it next turn between the Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot and the rogue refiner, but that does not mean that he's uh, very close to stabilizing. Take seven. Go to 14. One of the shielded Aether Thieves dies. <coughs> is Jerry done for the turn? Is he going to draw a card? Uh, he could use Crit Breaker before drawing a card. He's waiting potentially to uh, keep man up for both activating Crit Breaker or keep protecting Relentless Dead against something like Radiant Flames. Okay, so he's just going to pass the turn back. Also to got the Scrap Heap Scrounger here. This could be Yuya Watanabe's last turn of the tournament. He needs something very special to happen to get him out from behind the massive horde of zombies that Jerry Thompson has summoned on his side of the battlefield. A second copy of Aetherworks Marvel off the top of the library for Watanabe, not what he wanted to see.
Rogue Refiner. Sure. Ether Hub. And there it is. Etherworks Marvel. It wouldn't be right if we didn't see a Marvel here on the last turn. Of course. This is how it has to end. One way or the other. Is Ulamog even good enough? It's just not, right? Ulamog by himself will not do the trick. Jerry Thompson in a dominant position here. This is his second Pro Tour top eight. Can he take home a trophy? Yuya passes the turn back on the end step. Jerry Thompson is going to activate, draw a card. Dark Salvation. You know, Dark Salvation is big enough to take down Ulamog at this point. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's very, very close. There's already seven, <coughs> eight zombies in play, and Jerry will be able to cast it for three more zombies. Granted, Ulamog might exile a zombie or two, but it's still, with those two Diagraph Colossi, it does not seem unreasonable. Yeah, you can tell how out of hand things have gotten here as Jerry Thompson's going to add five more power to the board on end step. Look at Yuya. He's looking at the board and doing the math. Is there any way out? This is all on Yuya's end step. Yuya quickly looks at his hand again. There's no good news there, Yuya. It's Etherworks, Marvel, and lands. Kozak's return off the Marvel would kill everything but the two Diagraph Colossi. So, okay. This is these six and, and cards. they're not lethal. You use destiny here. Here we go. Etherworks Marvel. I don't see anything in there that's going to save him. He found a removal spell, but it only can kill one creature. That is not what he wanted to see. Jerry Thompson sipped calmly and awaits his fate. He is going to consult his hand again. He's thinking of any possible way to get out of this mess, but look at that board. He is not there's dead. nothing he can do. This turn, but he's getting to the point where there's no combination of cards that really get him out of this. There's certainly cards that Jerry can draw that could change that not dead this turn thing as well. Harness Lightning is going to kill Crypt Breaker. A little later in the game than I thought that play would be made. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, absolutely. Here's a draw step for Thompson. <laughs> Lord of the Accursed. Is that what he found? If we weren't lethal before, we are lethal now. That was one of the cards I was referring to. Lord of the Accursed. From Jerry. This certainly gives him a lethal board state. There's nothing you can do at this point. <laughs> All Jerry has to do... Well, it looks like he's going to fire off the Dark Salvation, too. Kill the Rogue Refiner. Are there enough zombies? <laughs> I feel like there's enough zombies, Luis. Jerry Thompson on the verge of becoming a Pro Tour champion. Go to combat. Attack. Attack. Send in the zombie horde. Can you do anything about this, Yuya Watanabe? doing the math. He's blocking. He's going to draw a card, try to hit another Harness Lightning. Even Harness Lightning would not do it. Though. Doesn't do it. And that's going to do it. He says, congratulations, Jerry Thompson, your Pro Tour Amonkhet champion. It took him only two tries to do it. <laughs>
Second Pro Tour top eight, first Pro Tour trophy for Jerry T. Congratulations to Jerry Thompson, your champion. And hey, we even got a smile out of him at the end as well, Louise. <laughs> Jerry is all business when he plays. You know that, but uh, he is going to have a horde of fans lined up, much like the horde of zombies that he used to win the tournament to congratulate him once we let him out of the feature match area, fantastic victory there for Jerry T and another amazing performance, of course, from Yuya Watanabe, one of the best players in our game. And let's not forget the team aspect here as well. Team Musashi putting a player in the top four and a player in the top two of the tournament, solidifying their lead in that as uh, Jerry Thompson works for Team Mutiny and tries to put them on the map. Great stuff from the feature match area. That's going to do it for our coverage here from the booth. Let's send it back to the news desk. Welcome back to the desk. All the post-match action, all the big, big name interviews. You could shake a stick at. Jerry Thompson is your Pro Tour Armanquette champion. Maria, your thoughts? What a game there. The, the, it's just showing the resiliency to me of the Mono Black Zombies deck, able to come back from a Radiant Flames on turn three and still attack for the win. Yeah, and it, it, it took out three creatures. I mean, it's not just, oh, okay, maybe I'll have to settle for a two for one. It's like, no, actual sweep the board. Don't care, don't care. These this zombie decks, I mean, it is a great marriage of flavor and gameplay because they just keep coming back for more. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that as we were watching. It's like, <laughs> wow, like this actually does feel like a bunch of zombies like coming back from the graveyard, multiplying, just forming this massive army, um, working together, you know. It's, it, I mean, yeah, it just, like you said, great marriage of flavor and gameplay for sure. You said it best. Yeah, like Dread Wanderer, you know. <laughs> it's like, here it comes again. Yep. And yep. some of those zombies were foils, so they were looking good. Yeah, yeah, they were in actually remarkably good shape for a zombie. <laughs> um, so why don't we go back to the start of the day here? Because we had a great top eight, um, interesting um, collection of decks. Half the field um, in the top eight were playing some version uh, of Teema Etherworks. But um, Ian, I get the feeling that there's a lot of room for innovation in what people are going to call Marvel decks moving forward. I think there is. I mean, even here this weekend, we saw a number of different flavors. Some were more controlling. Some played more like mid-range decks that had a really robust backup plan. Others were more all in on the combo, playing you know upwards of four copies of Ulamog. So I think you know the jury's still out on what the best version of that is. Of course, uh, Team Genesis, I believe, was were the ones that uh, innovated the Chandra Flame Caller mm. in their deck that did great work for them, especially against the Zombies deck this weekend. So it's all gonna it's all gonna depend on how standard evolves moving forward, how these decks are going to adapt. Yeah, and the first time you can check out new standard is when we go to GP Montreal. We'll have live video coverage throughout the two days from there. If you like the Pro Tour rerun, knowing everything we know now about what 400 of the best players in the world can come up with, what will you sleeve up for the next round of GP action in standard? There's going to be a lot of shaking up between now and next Saturday. But in the bracket, Chris Fennell opened up, and the way it worked out, there was an Etherworks Marvel list in all four of our quarterfinals. So we'd get to see them against a variety of opponents. Uh, for Yuyu Watanabe, he was up, up against the number one seed, uh, Chris Fennell, with White Black Zombies, uh, which was a deck, I know, Maria, that you were a fan of, the White Black. Oh, absolutely. I loved the addition of White, giving the decks more reach, and then having common draft staples like Binding Mummy in the deck just made me so, so very happy. Yeah, make, any, any time a mummy can make the leap from just a 2-2 you know, a filler on the limited curve yes. to all-star at the PT in, in the constructor rounds. That's pretty awesome. But Ian, you were in the booth for that quarterfinal, and actually it wasn't that competitive. Yeah, I mean, there were a couple couple close games, couple close swings within there, but ultimately Yuya Watanabe won that match 3-0. to zero. Yeah, so next uh, in the bracket was uh, one of the real uh, fantastic, heartwarming stories of this, or many a PT, uh, in all honesty. Christian Calcano, 144 Grand Prix that man's played in. Seven top eights, two titles, but never a Pro Tour top eight. And really just so much hard work went into the, quote, overnight success story that was Christian Calcano at this tournament. And even last week, he was talking about the successes he was hoping for for his teammates. Not a word about himself, but in the end, it was he who got to the top eight mono black zombies this time against the Etherworks Marvel of Martin Muller. Ian, again, you got to keep your eye over that one. 
Yeah, that was another cool match. A lot of back and forth swings. Game three in particular was really interesting. Christian Calcano resolved two copies of Lost Legacy, taking almost all of the win conditions out of Martin Mueller's deck. However, the game slogged on, and it was the zombies versus the sort of mid-rangey, grindy type engine that these decks uh, can produce. And surprisingly, Martin Mueller actually won that game. It's an awesome one. Go back and check it out if you didn't get a chance. Uh, and that ended the match in a 3-0 and victory for Martin Mueller. Right, and you actually uh, picked out World of Virtuoso as your card of the day yesterday. That's right. Precisely because, sure, you can get rid of all the yellow mocks. Doesn't always matter. Just on we go. Just grindy, grindy get the job done. So Martin Muller advanced to the semi-final. Maria, in the bottom half of the bracket, what happened? All right, we had Mark Tobias on Teamer Etherworks Marvel versus Jerry Thompson, of course, playing mono black zombies. Ian, uh, what stood out to you in this match? Um, yeah, I mean, this was another nail biter for sure. Um, Good, good amount of back and forth uh, as things progress, but yeah, you know, in I, the end. I, I really think the big thing there is, yeah. is actually less about the gameplay, but the significance of Mark Tobias, who, was, who really was going to potentially change the direction of the team series completely. With a win, Lingering Souls fall outside the top four. With a loss to Jerry Thompson, Tobias and Eureka stay in, I think it's sixth. And Lingering Souls became fourth. So, in a way, it was sort of trumped by the uh, the overall uh, win. No pun intended there, by the way, American viewers. Um, so, Thompson wins 3-1 in that one. Um, and then finally, uh, Maria, we had Yukihiro against Froelich. Yeah, Ken Yukihiro on Black Green Energy, the lone Black Green Energy deck in the field versus Eric Froelich on Teamer Etherworks Marvel. Of course, Eric had some bad draws. Uh, Ken had some really, really amazing hands, and that was a pretty quick one, too. Uh, Ken Yukihiro took down that quarterfinal. Ian, the Black Green Energy deck, it has the potential to get lost in the shuffle because of the new excitement of zombies, and there's multiple zombies to choose from, the obvious powerhouse of the Marvel decks. But this was the lone black green energy. Where do you see that potentially moving forward in standard? Yeah, great question, Rich. I mean, this is a deck that had done well in previous seasons. And to me, it's the kind of the king of the mid-game board. Like, it's very good at getting big creatures onto the battlefield early. And that's exactly what we saw happen in that match against Eric Froelich. Uh, we saw some long tusk cubs really run away with the game, backed up by uh, blossoming defense. And so uh, Ken Yukihiro did triumph there in a 3-0 win against Eric Froelich. Now, if you are an Etherworks Marvel player, I know that following this Pro Tour, you're going to want to know, what on earth do I do in the mirror? Is it a toss-up? Um, because in the Miramatic universe of Etherworks Marvel, someone's got to find an edge somehow. Yu Watanabe was up against Martin Muller in semi-final one in that mirror. It was 3-0 to Watanabe. Um, Ian, is, th is there anything you can really do to gain yourself an edge in that mirror? Yeah, I actually think Yuya's deck, uh, the way he constructed it and also the way he played with that kind of more controlling attitude for the deck, having extra main deck counter spells and a really potent sideboard, plus those glimmers of genius just to give him that mid-game you know, catapult as far as card van advantage are concerned. Uh, it really impressed me there and I think you know, Yuya uh, took down that match and I think he would, he would take it down again if we were to replay that. Right, so Yuya Watanabe got to the final with a 3-0 sweep. Maria, how about the bottom half of the bracket? All right, Jerry Thompson, as we all know, Mono Black Zombies versus Ken Yukihiro's Black Green Energy build. In the end, of course, Jerry Thompson getting there with those zombies. That zombie horde versus Black Green Energy. Zombies kind of a newer deck on the horizon versus Black Green Energy, which is a mm. sort of a rebuild from a deck we've seen a few months earlier that got some new toys thanks to uh, Amon Ket. Now, we've already touched, in on this idea of the resiliency of, of the Mono Black Zombies list. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, like even a really early player, someone just starting out in their constructed magic career, can look at a deck that, in theory, has very small creatures and say, well, board sweepers. That's got to do it, right? But apparently not. So where's that conundrum going? Yeah, indeed. So Zombies has a lot of way, ways to fight against those board sweepers there. Um, it can grow its creatures with lords like uh, Lord of the Accursed, Liliana's Mastery, and also Diagraph Colossus can just become absolutely huge. And beyond that, there's also a bunch of zombies that can come back from the graveyard like Dread Wander and Relentless Dead. So while board sweepers are an excellent way to fight against zombies, the zombies deck has a lot more resilience uh, beyond that. I'm wondering, uh, FNM coming up, what would you be interested in uh, packing in your game bag? Uh, as far as like what deck would I play? Yeah. Uh, definitely black-white zombies, I think, from what I've seen here in this tournament. It just looks really appealing to me. Um, 
you know, easy deck to build, relatively straightforward to pilot, has a, you know, a lot of game against other Zombies decks and against Etherworks Marvel. All right, well, whether you're going to Friday Night Magic or whether you're going along to a Grand Prix or just busting out something on Magic Online, we are gearing up for a new shape of standard, and that's been formed by the 400 players in this room. It's time now for the award ceremony for Pro Tour Armand Kett. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the feature match here here in Nashville for Pro Tour Amon Ket. It is now time for the award ceremony where we honor our champion from the United States, Jerry Thompson. Jerry, congratulations. You can hear the applause from all your fans. You have many fans around the world. We know it's been a long road to get here. What's going through your mind right now? Is this real? Like, <laughs> no, for real. I, I don't know. This is, it hasn't set in yet, really. It hasn't really set in. I, I can imagine, you know, it took you a while to get your first, first Pro Tour top eight. You made your second one. You wasted no time, ran right through the field, and picked up the trophy. You seem so calm at the table. Is it hiding a turmoil underneath, or are you really that chill when you're playing? Oh, I mean, you only need to look at the game one of my top four match to see that I'm not all there all the time, you know? Uh, but yeah, mostly pretty calm. I think yesterday was way more stressful than today. Today was kind of like a free roll. It's like I made it. This is a, a pretty big accomplishment, you know, and whatever happens, happens. But uh, yeah, yesterday it was like when I'm X and two, X and three, it was really tough. You've dedicated your life to this game. You've worked at Wizards of the Coast. You've made content for years. You've played at the highest level, and now you've reached the pinnacle, you're a Pro Tour champion. Congratulations, Jerry. Thank you. I want to give you an opportunity here uh, to thank anybody that helped get you to this point. Uh, wonderful girlfriend, Isabel. She's awesome. Best friend, Josh Cho, also great. My team's all right. <laughs> the, the geniuses that decided to play 22 basic swamps. <laughs> we only yeah. need one good player to do well with it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations once again to our champion, Jerry Thompson.